I, I have a, a word from God tonight, and, and it is powerful. I'll go right into the scripture, and then we'll pray. Okay? The, the scripture is going to be 1 Samuel 11 and 1 through 3. NOT version. And it says this. In the spring of the year, when kings normally go out to war, David sent Joab and the Israelite army to fight the Ammonites. They destroyed all the Ammonite army and laid siege to the city uh, of Rabbah. However, wow, however, David stayed behind in Jerusalem. Isn't David a king? Let's keep reading. Late one afternoon, verse 2, um, after his midday rest, David got out of the bed and was walking on the roof of the palace. As he looked over the city, he noticed a woman of unusual beauty taking a bath. Somebody say, uh-oh. Um, verse 3, he, he uh, sent someone to find out who she was, and he was told she is Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam and the, and the wife of Uriah the Hittite. The wife of Uriah the Hittite. Uh-oh. Then David sent, verse 4, messengers to get her. And when she came to the palace, he slept with her. Slept with another man's wife. Sheesh. Let's pray. This is getting deep. This is, some, this is a San Bernardino story right here, y'all. Let's pray. <laughs> Father, we thank you so much for your word. Father, I pray that you speak tonight. Speak to us. You have given this word, God. Once again, it's more instruction so that we can grow, so that even 2021 and the rest of this year can be the best year ever. Thank you so much, Lord. We love you in Jesus' name. So David... Basically, in a nutshell, he's supposed to be in war the year or the, the, the time when kings went out to war, but he's out of position and he's actually uh, sleeping instead of going to war. He sent someone else to war and he's on his roof and he sees a woman who's another man's wife and he actually calls her. And he used his kingship to get her there, and he sleeps with another man's wife. This, this is really, really, this is the word get, God gave me tonight for us. Let's get in position. David was out of position. It was a time that kings went to war, and David did not go to war. Somebody say out of position. David was out of position. And just let me, let me share this with you. When we are out of position for purpose, we are in position to sin. When we are out of position for purpose, we are in position to fall or to sin. That was David's case. And for the sake of time, I'm going to move on. Three ways we can get in position. And these are ways that God gave me. And you may, you may say, man, I, I got some ways I can get in position. This is what God is speaking right now. I believe it is a word from God. This is the first way. Get in the fight. Get your, the, in sports they say it like this. Get your head in the game. Get your head in the fight. David, instead of being in the fight, in the war where he was supposed to be, was actually sleeping and ended up sleeping with Uriah's wife. Somebody say, get your head in the fight. Supposed to be in war, but sleeping instead and ended up falling. Is there a war or a fight? that we are out of position in right now? Maybe, maybe it's a fight for our children. Maybe, maybe it's a war or a fight for our marriage. Maybe, maybe it's a war or a fight for our business. You know, through, through COVID, it's, it's, through this whole season, it's been a war and a fight for our church. But, but this is the thing. Are we sleeping 
or out of position during that fight. Wow. This is what we need to do. During the war or the fight, somebody say, no more spiritual apathy. David, this is what the word apathy means. It means lack of interest, enthusiasm, or concern. So, so in the time that kings went to war, David wasn't interested in that. David had a whole nother interest than what his interest or enthusiasm or concern should have been. Apathy. Right? Lack of interest. No more, and I'm, and I'm declaring this, no more lack of concern for what's most important. God, our marriage, our kids, our family, our purpose, no more, I'm declaring this over you, no more lack of concern or apathy for what's most important. We got to get our head in the game, right? It says we should have fire, excitement, enthusiasm. You know what this word enthusiasm means? It, it comes from a word um, in, in, in Dios, and this word, it means God within, we as believers, we should have enthusiasm because we have a living God inside of us. We should be excited about what our purpose, about what God has called us to do, right? So enthusiasm about advancing God's kingdom and our purpose and what we have been called to do. Look at this. I, I love this. I love this scripture. And this is, this is a repeat even from Sunday. I'm telling you, I am a son of the ministry, y'all, and this really, really touched me, and I believe is very prevalent in the season and even now as God is speaking. Matthew 11 and 12, the MEV says this, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has force, forcefully advanced. What kind of advance? Forcefully advanced. And the strong take it by force right how are we going to forcefully advance or take it by force if we're in apathy if we're over here sleeping when we're supposed to be in the war how are we going to forcefully take it by force it's not going to happen but this is what we do as the children of god as, as men and women of god who are someone say in position the church was not built to just survive, coexist, retreat, and to be complacent, and, uh, but to advance. God wants our families, our marriages, our children, our grandchildren, our businesses, our minds, our ministries, our spiritual lives, our city, our finances, our influence to advance. Right? You know, you know what the word says? The word of God says this that we are more than conquerors. We're, we're not just conquerors, we are more than conquerors. And we are more than conquerors in him, and so we are more than conquerors who can forcefully advance. This word advance, it means move forward, make progress, to increase in quantity, to grow, to take over aggressively, right? How can we take over aggressively if we're being apathetic? Wow. Force, this word force, it comes from the word um, harpazo. It means to claim oneself eagerly. I love this. Power of proclamation. You know, you know one of the ways that we are going to forcefully take back or advance the kingdom of God is with our words, our proclamation, what we say what we declare let me ask you this what are you saying like I, we're talking about being apathetic you know are, are we being apathetic and unconcerned about our family who is not saved about our children who have gone astray or about our marriage that has fallen apart what what are we doing what are we saying are we saying oh well 
I'll just get a divorce. I'll get another wife. Is that what we're saying? Is that what we're proclaiming? We have to change it. This is, this is what it also means, force. It means energy, power of action, uh, intensity, power of passion. Passion for what? We're, we're talking about family. We're talking about the church advancing. We're talking about the kingdom of God advancing. We, we should be passionate about our purpose, about the kingdom of God advancing in our city, in our homes, our family being saved. We need a passion for that. And the church said amen. Whew. This is the other thing. No more spiritual passivity. And this is what the word passivity means. It means being passive. Acceptance of what's happening without action, response, or resistance. Are we just sitting and letting the enemy trample over our family? Are, are we just sitting and allowing the devil to steal our purpose? You, you know, you know there, there, there's two there's two major attacks of the enemy, okay? There's two major attacks of the enemy. If, if, if for unbelievers, the enemy will do everything that he can so that you do not get saved, so that you do not receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. That's the one major attack. The other major attack is for believers who have gotten saved, and now they go, you go to church, you're in church, you have a church family, you, you do the church thing. But, but, but this is what the enemy wants to do. He wants to stop you from, from, from fulfilling your purpose. And if he can stop you for, from fulfilling your God-given purpose, you can go to church. You can talk about Jesus all you want. The scripture says that the enemy... The devil believes demons believe in Jesus and they tremble, right? <laughs> right? They even know the word, right? But this is the key. It's not about that. It, it is about being in position and someone say, fulfilling your purpose. Do not be passive and allow the devil to steal your purpose. Wow. When we are in position, we have God's power to advance. Let's be strong in the Lord. Let's advance and advance the kingdom of God with force. Somebody say, with force. In these last days, we have overwhelming victory. Or we have an overwhelming fall or defeat. I'm going to say that again. This is the revelation God gave me. And this is why I'm so passionate about even preaching this. Because I'm telling you guys, we are in a time right now that in these last days, there's two things that will happen. There's no in between. We will, through God, through being in position, have overwhelming victory. Or we will, from not being in position, have overwhelming defeat. And that's why you have people who are really struggling in this time. We, have, we, we, know, we, we know those people. You see marriages that are breaking down like never before. You see alcoholism is going, it's, it's through the roof like never before. Drug addiction, overdoses, it's through the roof like never before. We see it, we see it happening. Right now, like never, it's, it's overwhelming how it's happening, right? But we as the church, we have been called to have overwhelming victory. The scripture says that we are more than conquerors. We need to get in position and walk in the authority God has called us to walk in. Somebody say get in position, right? Right? And when we're in position, we have overwhelming victory. And someone say, the devil, he has no power. No weapon, the scripture says. No weapon. Doesn't matter what it looks like. 
Doesn't matter what it seems like. Doesn't matter what the news is saying. Doesn't matter what people are saying. No weapon, the word of God says, no weapon that is formed. It may form. It may look like it's forming. It may look like it's going to work. No weapon that is formed against me. The weapon will form that, that they'll, they'll, they'll get that gun together. They'll get ready to pull the trigger. And when they pull the trigger, nothing will happen. Because no weapon that is formed against us, it shall not prosper. Amen. Somebody say, get in position. Thank you, Lord. This is, this is another way. We're talking about, we're talking about um, three ways to get in position. The first one was get in the fight, get your head in the game, get in the fight, right? The second way is, and, and this is for, for those that may be guests watching. First of all, I want to say welcome uh, to, to our watch party. But we have something called P12s. And it's called a power of 12. And basically, it is discipleship. And so number two is get in a P12. And, and I have a, a note that says, join a P12 and show up. Join it, but not only join it, show up to be discipled, right? Now, this, this, this P12, this is one of the revelations that uh, God gave us as a church, our pastor, that we have started and that we have been doing. And I tell you, it has been the life of our church during this season. It literally has been the lifeline to be able for people to still be discipled, loved, helped, cared for during this time. Get in a P12. In other words, be discipled, right? Be discipled. Having a godly mentor can change your very existence. That sounded deep. I could have said life, but very existence, it sounds deeper. And because it is that deep, right? Let me, let me, let me share myself. The person who I am today, and I say this a lot, is because of the discipleship that I have received from Pastor Marco, right? And the pastors here. Mainly Pastor Marco. He took me under his wing. I remember, I want to share a quick story. I remember um, this was the early time we were on 4th Street. And I, you know, I'm being, I'm doing my best to be a good disciple. And Pastor's casting out a demon. You know, he's casting demons out. And, and, and I'm, I'm there, I'm watching, you know, I'm, I'm being a disciple, I'm learning. And, and, and I felt something rise up in me when, when Pastor was casting a demon out. And so I tell Pastor, I go, Pastor, oh, I felt something rise up in me. He goes, what? So he, he ends up praying for me, right? And, and I got delivered and set free from all kinds of spirits. One of the major spirits that I got set free from, or demons, was spirit of poverty. Poverty mentality. My thinking. And, and to, to make a long story short, this is the power of being a disciple. I was a, I was a disciple in position, learning. I was receiving. And, I, and, and, and in that moment, I got set free. And let me tell you this. It wasn't a year later that the, the windows of heaven opened on my life. Got a new car. I mean, all these things from being set free began to flood my life just from being a disciple. Wow. Right? The mention of being, a, uh, being discipled is so important right now because this is a generation that is being mentored by the world wide web full of lies and, tw and twisted truths, promoting lust and self-gratification. These are the last days. And just for the sake of time, you can read the scripture and it talks about the last days and the way people will be. And I, and I tell you, when I look at this scripture, it's 2 Peter 3, 1 through 5. I see that this generation is right there. This generation needs discipleship. And let me say this. Don't fall for the trap. Don't, don't be an internet Christian. <laughs> don't, don't get your gospel from the internet, 
I tell you, one minute you'll be thinking, believing this crazy thing. The next minute you'll be believing this crazy thing. Do it the way the Bible says. Get in an amazing church. Get the word of God that's preaching the word of God and get somebody to disciple you. Amen. It says, it says, um, um, we need to be discipled and we need to make disciples. So this is what we do. And this is the question here. Who's discipling you and who are you discipling? That's the question here at the Way Road Outreach, right? Who's discipling you? And, and who are you discipling? You want, this, you want a scripture? It's Matthew 28, 19 and 20. It says, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach them. That's what happened there. That's what Pastor was doing. He was teaching me. Teach them, or these new disciples, to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you, even to the end of the age. Wow. And number three, talking about what we do to get in position. The last one is getting God's presence. This is it's so powerful. Jesus died to restore God's presence. Get in it. I'll say it again. Jesus died to restore God's presence. This is what, you know, for many years, the gospel, I've, I've always known that the gospel was the, so, so that we can go to heaven, so that men can be, you know, bridged back to eternity, to, to, to God, and, and, you know, but I, I think it's within the last year or so that I really got a deep revelation about why Jesus died. It, he died so that man's relationship, someone say relationship, relationship can be restored back with his creator. This, this is what we have to do. We have to get back to Eden. You know what Eden is? We know the Garden of Eden, but this is what the word Eden means. It's pronounced Aden, and it means pleasure. It means, it, this is what it was. It was the place of God's presence. You, do you know, this is what we do. Because we're not in God's presence, we find and do other things to try to fulfill that pleasure. People do drugs. They get that first high, and then they chase after that high. They drink alcohol. I see people smoking cigarettes to get a relief. I see that they're doing everything that they can to try and to find a pleasurable moment. Sleeping with women, women sleeping with men, everything they can. And this is all we have to do. Why settle for the false pleasure <laughs> when you can get the real pleasure in God? Jesus died on the cross so that we can have relationship once again and this is what the scripture says in psalm 16 and 11 the nlt it says you will show me the way of life we can have life granting me the joy of your presence and the pleasures of living with you forever wow be uh being out and this is important here and i'm i'm, I'm wrapping it up but being out of position, this is what happened with David. Either God's presence or God's purpose can lead to death spiritually and physically. Being out of position can lead to death spiritually, separation from God, and physically. Look at 2 Samuel 12 and 13 and 14. It says this. Then David confessed to Nathan, the prophet who came to David. I have sinned against the Lord. Nathan replied, yes, but the Lord has forgiven you. And you won't die for this sin. Nevertheless, verse 14. 
Because you have shown utter contentment or rejected or disowned or turned away for the word of the Lord by doing this or from the word of the Lord by doing this, your child will die. Wow. How many times have we done things? We, we heard a testimony uh, from, from John Richardson about how his sin of being out of position actually caused his brother and his sister to be killed. I know this, this, is, this is heavy. I know it's heavy. But this is the seriousness of this moment. And God is telling us that the, the importance of being in position and not being out of position, that being out of position, not, not warring, not praying, not, not being in position in God's presence, uh, working in God's strength can cause a loved one, a family member, someone dear to us, our own spiritual life, our purpose to die. David repented. That's the good news. Somebody say, that's good news. David repented, and he got back in position. And so can we. And we're taking it home. So can we. You know, there's a powerful psalm, very popular psalm. And it's Psalm 51. 10 and 12. And that psalm is a prayer from David for this situation with Bathsheba. Or Bathsheba. And this was a prayer. I think it's so powerful. And this, this prayer gives us insight of why David was called. Even after all he'd done, a man after God's own heart. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Renew a loyal spirit within me. Do not banish me from your presence and don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and make me willing to obey you. Wow. Wow. I, I want to tell you, you know, you, you may have gotten out of position. I've done it. I'm guilty. I've gotten out of position. But being back in position is just a sincere prayer away. David, I love when he, when, when he was confronted by Nathan, he said I, he admitted it. He didn't make an excuse. He admitted it. He said, I've sinned. I've, I, I did it. I did it. And then we see in the Psalms, God, David's cry to God, his heartfelt cry to God on how sorry he was, how he repented for what he did. This is what we can do to get back in position. When we repent, God will restore us. Just like he restored David, after he got back in position. I want to share this just as we're closing. This is so powerful. I've read this story so many times, and I didn't realize this. It's so powerful. It's so powerful for us right now. When you go down to verse 26, somebody say, meanwhile. I love this. Meanwhile, while David was sinning, doing everything that he was doing with Bathsheba, Bathsheba, out of position. This is what happened. Joab was fighting against Rabbah, the capital of, of Ammon. And he captured the royal for, uh, fortifications. 
Joab sent messengers to tell David, I have fought against Rabbah and captured its water supply. Now bring the rest of the army um, and capture the city. Otherwise, I will capture it and, and get credit for the victory. This is crazy. David was out of position. And somebody say, somebody was fighting for him. Wow. Joab, he's still fighting and he's winning the battle while David is out of position. He's fighting for David. God is using him to fight for David. I want to tell you even now, there has been somebody praying for you. There has been somebody fighting for you. Your mom has been praying for you. Your dad has been praying for you. Your grandma has been praying for you, has been fighting for you. Why you have been out of position. And this is why God is now making his call. This word, I believe it with all my heart. It's from a prayer. Somebody's been praying for you. And now God has sent this word to tell you, get back in position. Look, jo Joab, he sends a messenger. And he says, he, he goes, he goes, now bring the rest. He's telling David this. Bring the rest of the army and capture the city. Otherwise, I will capture it and get the credit for the victory. So David wow, gathered the rest of the army and went to Rabbah. Somebody say he got back in position. Wow. And he fought against it and captured it. David removed the crown from the king's head and placed it on his own head. The crown was made of gold and set with gems and weighed 75 pounds. David took. Who took? David took. After all he did with Bathsheba. <laughs> Somebody's fighting for him. Somebody's praying, interceding. Even though David was out of position, he calls him back into position to claim his crown, to claim his victory. This is what I want to tell you tonight. Somebody, you, you've, you've done some things that you have thought was so bad. You have felt like you've been so far out of position. How can I get back in position? And when I do, it's not gonna be the same. I wanna tell you tonight, David not only got his crown back when he got back in position because he was a king, he got another crown that was filled with gold and jewels that weighed 75 pounds. It reminds me of even the prodigal son. The, the, the scripture says that his father met him, put a ring and a robe on him, and received him and told him, go, go, and, 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 and uh, kill the, the, the fatted calf. My son is back. And I, I tell you tonight, that is how God wants to receive you tonight. If you have gotten out of position, and those you may say, you know, I'm good. You know, I stayed in position through this fight. I, I, I want to I encourage you. The fight's not going to get any easier. Continue. Continue to proclaim God's word. Continue to fight. To continue to pray for your family. Continue to stand strong. But for those, and even right now, those who, who say, man, I, I, I feel strong in the spirit. I've stayed in position. I want you to begin to pray even for those right now who have maybe left position. I believe God is going to restore tonight. And you, you thought that it was going to be a whole different thing. You thought it was going to come a whole. As a matter of fact, you didn't even think this could ever happen. You thought that you would die out of position. I'm here to tell you tonight, God will 
restore you. And when he restores you, he'll restore his pleasures evermore. He'll restore his joy. He'll restore his peace. He'll restore even the treasure. Everything that the enemy stole from you, God will restore it. That child that that you gave up on, get back in position. Pray for him again. Lift him up again. Put him, bring him before God again. God will do it. And this is my call tonight. I, I know, I, I, I feel God moving. Even, even, <laughs> I, I don't know how you say it, through the internet, I don't know, through the world wide web, I know that God is doing something in a lot of people's hearts. And, and this is my call. Come back to God. Come back to God. Get back in position. And when you get back in position, God will restore you. This is such a powerful story. It shows the mercy of God. It shows the love of God. And he's, you know, you, you know I, I, my father really wasn't there for me. I really didn't know the love of a father. I do now through Pastor Marco. But in some of you, 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 you don't know the love of a father, so you, you can't picture God loving you this way. But I want to let you know he does. And we're going to say a prayer. And, and, we, and what I want you to do when we say this prayer, I want you to go even in the comments and put, God restored me. I want you to comment, God restored me. I'm back in position. God restored me. I'm back in position. And when we pray, I'm telling you, don't allow the enemy to come back. Don't allow, don't allow the, uh, re, uh, um, you know, regret and all these lies of the devil to come back on you again. He says, the, the word of God says, he throws it into the sea of forgetfulness Never to remember it again. I hear Holy Spirit even saying this. Getting back in position may be forgiving someone. There's someone that you may have to forgive. Really forgive to get back in position. Let's forgive tonight. Amen. And one of the things to get back in position is this. This is major. Get back in church. Get back in your church. Yeah, I said your church. Do you know that God has a specific purpose for you to fulfill in your church? You, when you fulfill your purpose, uh, or when you fulfill, I have, it, I have it written down. Let me read it. That way I, I don't mess it up. Super important. God has called us to be in the specific body or a specific church our gifts and abilities to come together as a local body to fulfill his purpose together my purpose is fulfilled when our purpose is fulfilled when you're fulfilling your purpose in the local body your purpose is fulfilled God has called you to a specific church get back in that church get back in position and watch what God does Let's pray. Just repeat after me if you're watching online right now. Say, Jesus, I repent for every sin. I repent for getting out of position. And Jesus, right now, I believe you died on the cross. You shed your blood for my sins. I receive that sacrifice right now I get back in position I receive your sacrifice to put me back in the presence of God Jesus be the Lord of my life be the Lord of my life I give you my life in Jesus name amen well God bless you thank you so much for joining us tonight I tell you what, if you said that prayer, you are back in position. 
We have church this Sunday. Come to church. Next Wednesday, we'll be having church. Come to church. John Ramirez will be here next Wednesday. Come to church, guys. Get back in position. You know, don't let that guilt and all these things of your past, let that go. Get back in position. Get back in the body of Christ, what God has called you to be. We also have another way for your next step. Just go to I Got Saved. Dot com. Our discipleship classes are going right now. You can get plugged into one of those discipleship classes. That's important. Like I said, being discipled, getting discipled. Go to igotsaved.com for your next step. Thank you so much for watching again at our Watch Party Wednesday night service. We love you guys. Enjoy the rest of your week.